What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC video. Today, someone is getting crowned the VGC World Champion, or maybe tomorrow, I don't know, I'm posting this one on Saturday. Uh, but Britain time, they're, they're like time warping, something to do with Doctor Who. Anyways, um, I figured, I, I'm like running out of things to talk about as far as VGC 2022 goes. Uh, obviously, we have Series 13 around the corner, however, the ladder for that is not up. Uh, so I can't really make a video about that, but uh, it, in the process of struggling to figure out what to record while I was going for a little trip this weekend, um, I, I figured, you know, since the World Championships are going on and we're pretty much done with Sword and Shield, uh, let's go ahead and rank every Sword and Shield format. Now, Sword and Shield had a lot of uh, iterations of VGC, and some of them were better than others, and some of them were absolute garbage. But uh, I just thought I would give my thoughts on them all today. Now that we're past it, Series 13 isn't exactly official since there would be no real tournaments for that, or at least no regional tournaments. We don't know about locals yet. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. If you guys enjoy this standpoint in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content and answer my comment question of the day, which is obviously going to be, what is your favorite and least favorite VGC format from Sword and Shield, aka Gen 8? Let's go ahead and get into it. So, Series 2. Now, I have a lot of Series 2 nostalgia. Series 2, and I guess Series 1, Series 1 kind of blends with Series 2. It's more or less the same. Um, this was a time when we thought that the coolest thing ever was something called the TED Core. Now, the TED Core stands for, let me get this going, actually, VGC 2022. Uh, the TED Core was, sorry, uh, Togekiss. Excadrill and Dragapult and what's funny is that this actually you know you would expect the Excadrill to be Sand Rush but it was usually uh, Mold Breaker to deal with Rotom Wash which was one of the best Pokemon in the format at the time uh, but yeah that, that was like something that was kind of weird to think about the fact that this was a thing that we used to play this used to be the most common team you'd run into on the ladder of course you know filling in the other slots sometimes you'd see a tyranitar if this is like sand rush excadrill you would typically see a rotom um rotom mo is your grass type or for your alternative grass type gyarados was was a grass type at the time because it ran power whip thus making it the best grass type in the format and obviously you know if you have that you know you just Actually, usually this is like what you would do. This is like a thing that would happen. Sometimes you would see like a Raichu, I'm sure, but that was that was pretty French. So yeah, you would expect a team to look like this. Now, this was kind of a fun format. I think if we were to go back to Series 2 with all of the knowledge that we have today about how Dynamax works and everything, now that we're experts in this game and this mechanic, I think Series 2 might have been a top tier series. Uh, you know, we were limited to what was in the game. We hadn't had any DLC yet. We didn't even have Pokemon a Home yet, which uh, allowed for things like Incineroar and Venusaur to enter the game. Uh, Dynamax was a lot more acceptable when the power creep wasn't just so awful. Uh, but now that we have, you know, things like Landris running around with Dynamax, things like Thunderous running around with Dynamax, uh, it's a little bit less enjoyable. Personally, I think that even if we were to go back to Series 2, I still wouldn't be a Dynamax fan, but it would be a lot better. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put Series 2 in a very safe uh, A tier. I think that compared to the rest of the formats, by the way, this is going to be exclusively within the vacuum of Pokemon Sword and Shield. You know, we're not comparing this to the absolute goaded format VGC 2018 post Incineroar, uh, which would be an S tier if it was in Sword and Shield, but no. We're just talking about relative to Sword and Shield formats. Series 3 and 4, that, that's going to be a B for me. This is around the time that uh, Crit Togekiss was a thing. Crit Togekiss is the bane of my existence. Uh, we figured out around this time. Let me see if I can find a team. It's kind of hard not to find a Togekiss. Team Togekiss like fell off around this time, or right about now. Right around today. Uh, a team from back then. Team from back then. What was the team I ran back then? This is the team I ran back then. Uh, so yeah, Togekiss would run scope lens and uh, ignore the, the hamburger theme. Uh, but yeah, Togekiss was a Pokemon that would run scope lens. And while scope lens typically is a meme in Dynamax format, Dynamax is like notorious for allowing for things that used to be memes, things that you would bully kids in the playground for running, uh, to all of a sudden become viable. Uh, and this was definitely one of them. The crit Togekiss set was able to 
um, just absolutely bypass things like Snarl, things like Parting Shot that you would face from opposing Incineroars. Uh, it, it was it was something that we had never really seen before, a crit set being like the best set for a Pokemon. Um, basically, Togekiss was already oppressively good in previous formats in Series 2 because it was able to redirect away moves, so it usually run like a Babiri Berry to redirect away like a Max Steel Spike from opposing Excadrill, uh, and it would absolutely wall out and annihilate Dragapult. Uh, so one of your best ways of dealing with it was just like, you know, reducing its damage output. Eerie Impulses, Snarls, whatever you could do. When the Dynamax ends, it's like not that good, and it's like, you know, you can deal with it as a redirector. So whether it was a Dynamax Pokemon or a redirector, you had like the same tools dealing with it. Uh, now, now that Togekiss runs this set, it doesn't care about stat drops because there's a 50% chance for it to go, I don't care, and now I'm at plus one speed and my whole team's at plus one speed. Get over it, I win. That was a thing that happened. Um, and, and I don't miss it. I'll be honest, I do not miss it. I'm excited to go back to when it's not that good. Uh, but yeah, this is another team I built around that time. I've always been a crazy team builder. I have always been absolutely crazy with it. But yeah, uh, I would say that that's going to be a B tier because of that. Not not C. C is C is kind of, I don't know. I don't know if we're even going to have any C tiers. Series 5. Now, Series 5 was interesting. Actually, you know, this might be the C tier. This might be the C tier. Um... Wow, we are, you guys are going to see like an actual trend going on here. So uh, series five, I would put in C tier. While we did receive a lot of cool new tools, I would say that this is the first series where the power creep with Dynamax became apparent. Because if power creep is a thing within Pokemon, Dynamax is like a magnifier of it, of a, or a multiplier or whatever the correct term for it is. It will multiply the power creep. Uh, we had a lot of things running around that could one-shot other things. This was the, the release of uh, Gigantamax Cinderace with Libero, which allowed it to be like a super strong max Airstream Pokemon. Let me see if I can find a team where I use that. Um, just to give like an example of what, what a team from back then looked like. Okay, here's some Series 6. Series 6, Series 6, Series... Uh, this is a bad team that I made. Where's a good team that I made back then? Uh, I guess I only have okay teams from around this time. <laughs> I guess I only have okay teams. Okay, wait, this is a thing. This was a bad team, though. Ignore the, ignore the entire, ignore this entire team. Let's just talk about the format. Uh, so, yeah, so Series 5 was a format where we got a lot of cool new tools. We had, uh, what is it? Six? Five new Gigantamax Pokemon. No, six, if we include the Urshifu forms. Um, and also Urshifu came out around this time. Uh, and this allowed us to use things like Gigantamax Rillaboom, Gigantamax Cinderace. Some people would use Gigantamax Inteleon, even though it wasn't that great. Um, we had two more Gigantamax forms in the Kanto starters, and we had Urshifu running around. I would say that this was a very experimental time at the beginning of the format. It was pretty fun. Uh, we had a lot of things nuking each other, especially White Herb, uh, White Herb Cinderace or Life Orb Cinderace going for Max Airstreams, Max Darknesses, uh, Max Fireball. Like it, it had so many tools to one-shot Pokemon, it was very hard to deal with uh, without any form of like redirection or speed control. And at that, it could also take advantage of redirection and speed control. Cinderace was very good in this format, and if this format wasn't so short-lived, it would be it would it would go down as one of the greats as far as like Pokemon go. But yeah, this is a pretty short lived format uh, because we immediately went into series six. I would say the only reason this is C tier, it was playable and I enjoyed it and I definitely had fun playing it despite that at this time I wasn't making the best teams. Um, it's, it's just the general power creep of this format that makes me not quite like it because it was like, yeah, we have a lot of things that one shot each other and yeah, we have the tools to deal with it. Uh, but I still don't like the hyper offense is the name of the game in this format. Now, <laughs> remember how I said we have a lot of things that one shot each other and a lot of tools to deal with it? What if we banned all of those tools? Series 6 was garbage. Now, a lot of people in the comments will say something like, but Moxie boosted Marcos Perez. Moxie Marcos boosted Perez. Why was Series 6 bad? You could get away with using anything. It was the best format. I, I disagree. Series 6... Um, centralized the format to an extent that we have not quite seen before. You had things like Porygon Z and Clefairy running around that were just abhorrently strong. Um, it was kind of like a 50-50. It was like, okay, me and my opponent are both going to lead off Porygon Z Clefairy, 
are we going to follow me this turn? Are we going to Helping Hand Max Strike this turn? Or is the Clefairy going to sing? Ooh, could you imagine that? That's something that could happen. Um, this was the Porygon Z format. This was the Hyper Offense format. And also, it was like the not hyper offense format at times. It was like if you ran, if you ran something, it was dealing damage. That was the best way to put it. And at that, we didn't have the the tools necessary to deal with that. Um, Lapras was a thing that we ran around this time. Weakness policy Lapras was a thing, and Life Orb Lapras is a thing because uh, it was it was basically like okay, the the things that beat Lapras are now gone. Um, so Lapras is a lot better. However, we are able to hold on to Rillaboom, which was very surprising. There were a lot of weird bans in this format, I'll say this. Um, I, I feel like I'm all over the place explaining this format, and that's because I want to make a whole video about it, but let me, let me, let me just collect my thoughts, okay? This format, banning things across the board, the top 10 from both singles and doubles, hashtag free hip out on, was not a good call because while it did ban things that were at the top of the usage uh like you know like um incineroar like venusaur like torkoal like the indeedy forms and like dust clops unfortunately um or was it porygon 2 i forget which one got banned but it was one of the two while it did ban all of those things those things were integral into suppressing the power of other pokemon with Lapras, Porygon Z, and Dracozult being the poster childs of that sort of power creep that we experienced. It was basically a one-shot or get one-shot format. It was it was about as rocket taggy as Pokemon got, and that's that's comparing it to like restricted formats. Because in restricted formats, we had the bulky tools to deal with the things that were one-shotting things. So yeah. Anyways. Series 10, the only S tier. Why is Series 10? Also, we're out of order right now. You know, I'll get back to it. Let's let's go in order. Series 8 slash 11, I'm going to put at... I think Single Restricted was kind of fun, but it was way more matchup fishy than a lot of formats. It's going to be a C for me. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is a time where we were only allowed to use one Restricted, and Dynamax was still turned on. So it was like... Let me see if I have any more Series 8 teams. Sorry, all the teams got merged together as soon as, like, the format changed to 2022. Uh, yeah, so you were allowed one restricted per team. I don't think I have any. Do I not have any? I should have any. Oh, here's here's one. That was a bad team. Hold on. Where was my good team? This is a pretty fun one. All right, so this was a single restrict. Oh, no, that's Series 10. All right, anyways, let's just talk about it. I don't have the teams for it because I lost a lot of them a long time ago. Series 10 was of... Why am I getting mixed up? Series 8 was a format where you're only allowed to use one restricted. And that restricted was supported by basically everything else in your team. You might remember this format as the one where Zacian was really good, but Kyogre was just as good, and Venusaur was basically the restricted that Groudon carried next to it as a mediocre restricted. Groudon was sort of mediocre because Venusaur would always Dynamax and it was Intimidate Food. It was a very weird time to be playing VGC. Um, because we had never played single restricted before and at that Dynamax single restricted was kind of weird and we were also thinking that the reason we had single restricted was because we would never have double restricted because Dynamax was like the other restricted it was like a balancing thing but it wasn't it wasn't that was just how it is um, they just wanted to experiment with it for a season it was fun much more matchup fishy than any other format but very fun and i think that that's why it's going to be a, like a middle of the road pick like c uh calyrex ice was great you know we had Mimikyu calyrex ice teams we had zashi and everything teams we had grout on sun teams we had kyogre tornadoes teams it was a lot like what you see today but with less matchup fishing or but with more matchup fishing my bad uh, also, I'm still out of order. Series 7, 9. That's going to be a B tier for me. I really enjoyed it. While the power creep did get a lot worse, we were given back the tools from Series 6 that allowed us to deal with it. Uh, while Regieleki was super, super strong, we had Landorus on the other side of the field, which would just hard wall it out. Um, there were not yet any restricteds in the format, uh, which allowed it to not quite feel as broken as other formats. And this is also like the introduction of like Regigigas being good. That was really cool. Weezing Regigigas was such a fun thing to see. And the fact that it went so deep into Players Cup was like insane. This is also like the Players Cup format. This is the format we were playing in a lot of Players Cups. Um, Colossal was still absolutely goaded. 
Uh, we saw Colossal win a Players Cup at this time, I believe, uh, because we had that team running around with Urshifu Colossal, Dragapult, Galarian Moltres, Rillaboom, and Incineroar. This was like, I think this is like the perfect middle of the road Dynamax format. If we're going to include like legendaries, but not restricted, I think Series 7 was the best way to do it. And Series 9 was just Series 7 with more hindsight, which I really enjoyed getting to go back to that and learning from our mistakes. So that was a fun one. Series 10. Oh. Anyways, it's an S tier. Uh, series 10. Uh, can you guess why Series 10 is S tier? Here's why. It is the only format in Sword and Shield where we turned off Dynamax. That was so cool. Also, here's why I really love Series 10. I am a person who very much enjoys using big, fat, bulky teams, stupid bulky teams, dumb teams that eat hits and then hit you back and the game's gonna last 20 minutes because we are really going at it. We are using our full brain capacity to play this game. Yeah, Series 10 was all that and more. And I think that Series 10 was so fun to me because it was the first time where, where can I find it? Also, for one, uh, Xerneas came back. This is the only format where Xerneas could come back and you would run it with like two fire types and, and Volcarona was viable. This is so cool. But beyond that, we had Landorus Eye, which is scary, but even saucier than Landorus Eye was Landorus T. This isn't the right Landorus T. Where's my Lando T? Where's the Lando T? Hold on. Is this it? No, where's the Lando T that people were running at the end of the format? Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to find this because this is a really important point. There it is. This was a regular Lander Hysterian. It was a special attacker with U-Turn, Sludge Bomb, Earth Power, Protect, and Rocky Helmet. Why would you run this? Because it had a chance to live hits from Urshifu Rapid Strike and just have so much damage back on it. You intimidate Zacian and, and you live the hit from the Zacian while Zacian takes more damage. This was a normal thing. And to avoid, you know, having to, like, Earthquake your partners because Dynamax was turned off, uh, and to avoid losing to intimidate spam you would run a special moveset with earth power and sludge bomb was there to deal with rillabooms as well as xerneas this was a really cool thing to see we saw complete defensive lander hysterian in a format being normal so yeah this format felt like there were two singles games being played side by side it reminded me almost of vgc 2017. I really love this format it is the only s tier and if we could get more of that if we played series 10 until this game went away or if we could play the best format series 7 with dynamax turned off i would be so happy but yeah that was really cool also this is arguably the format where zashian was at its least viable um because well not least viable but least valuable because while um in dual restricted you don't have to run a zashian and in single restricted you're sort of matchup fishing against zashian in single restricted no dynamax zashian doesn't feel like a second dynamax because that's basically what it is it hits as hard as a dynamax <laughs> It just doesn't feel like it. It just feels like a, a very strong, like, you know, if you have like a queen in chess, it feels like your queen, you know. Anyway, series 12, current format. Um, I'm going to put that at either C or B. I kind of like it. I kind of don't. I do like, I, I'm going to put it at, at B because I do think it's objectively better than series 8 and 11 because the fact that we have two restricted allows you to do a lot of cool stuff. Um, this is one of the more developed formats because we've been playing it for almost an entire year now. Uh, but Double Restricted allows you to uh, avoid matchup fishing much more than other formats. Uh, you're able to run things like um, Calyrex Palkia. That was a duo that we saw. We saw Kyogre Zacian, also, you know, Groudon Zacian. Uh, we saw Dialga and Groudon. We saw Dialga and Kyogre. Calyrex Zacian. Like, there were a lot of combinations of Pokemon that were super viable as your restricted duo. No Xerneas though. However, Xerneas did win a did did win a a major with a Groudon as a partner because you know Groudon Charizard Xerneas is actually a fairly good combination. But yeah, uh, it was a lot easier to get away with what you wanted to use when you had two Restricteds to cover for your bad matchups, and that's why I think that it's just like a solid format. That's the format that you can go watch at the World Championships right now when this video goes up. Probably, probably not. Actually, it might be over. Anyways, good format. B tier, BDSP. 
that's going to be an A tier for me. We didn't play it long enough, so I kind of want to put it B tier. It was fun. It was it was ba it was basic Pokemon. It was just basic Pokemon. Back to basics. I don't like that we lost things like Eviolite though. That kind of sucked. But yeah, EV series is also going to be an A. The reason EV series is A and not B is because EV series had the foresight to ban things like Gothitelle and Urshifu so it wasn't broken because when you can't Dynamax to deal with Urshifu it's a lot harder to deal with um also Gothitelle is a little bit oppressive so if they didn't ban it it would probably be like a B but I think A is fine uh it was a fun format I very much enjoyed playing pure Pokemon in in Sword and Shield uh with no gimmick so that was really cool uh however these two were both unofficial formats and that just goes to show how like the official formats stack up against the unofficial formats because both unofficial formats are like a tier and the off season filler format where we turned off dynamax was s tier i think i'm, I'm I, you guys know now i'm a big dynamax hater if you like dynamax that's fine you know it's just a different thing that i personally don't enjoy um i'm excited for it to go away obviously i'm sure you guys are sick of me talking about it but uh yeah I think that this is going to wrap up my tier list. Obviously, you know, you guys can make your own tier list. I'll leave the link for this in the description down below. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about my tier list in the comment section down below. And if you guys enjoy, leave a like. Sorry if this one was a little bit rambly and unfocused. I'm like really tired and I'm trying to get videos done before I go for my weekend trip. So yeah, have a nice one, guys. Bye.